counselor and uh, for those that don't know who he is, uh, Marshall McLuhan called him the Leonardo of the 20th century. Um, they, were, they were friends. He was uh, kicked out of Harvard twice. Yes. In films. And at MIT while he was there, they came up with the, the Woods Hole dome geometry and they, he got a contract to actually build the restaurant, the dome restaurant. And it was the first commercial dome that it was being built specifically for a commercial operation. The same year, in 52, he also got a contract from Ford Motor Company to do, to dome the rotunda that Ford had because no other structural system that they had at the time would be able to do the clear plan clear span because the amazing thing about geodesics is they're the only structure known to humans that gets stronger as they get larger and there's no limit to size and they're clear span structures so there's no internal supports there are no columns so the first dome for a stadium that was ever proposed was Bucky proposing it for the Brooklyn Dodgers so that they wouldn't move out of Brooklyn in 1950 and he has a model you, there are some great photographs of him pitching with the model and in the end New York City didn't allow the dome to be built and LA called to the Dodgers with the, the weather where they don't need a dome. Is the goal of the proposal because Bucky by the, the 60s what, what was proposing that and after Expo 67, this year was the 50th anniversary of the book Operating Manual for Spaceship Earth, in which he, everyone was excited about the space race and going to the moon. The Apollo project was there. He encouraged people, he said, you don't understand, everybody's an astronaut. We're on a, a spaceship going to Earth through, through space right now, and we need to protect our life support here first and most importantly. And the dome sits there now like a sort of well, like a big white bubble of sea foam. Ever so slowly on a large land wave breaking toward the ocean at a speed of roughly ten miles per glacial effort. I thought it important to show that I understood science. <laughs> the Buc Bucky Fuller understood that change made creativity possible, and change was one of the basic operating principles of the universe. Whether that change was experienced as disintegration or integration. I, I, I seem to be a verb. You've all seen moving pictures run backwards, where people undive out of the swimming pool back onto the board. I'm going to run a moving picture of you backwards. You've just had breakfast. Now I'm going to run it backwards. And all the food comes out of your mouth <laughs> onto the plate. And the plates go back onto the serving trays and from the serving trays, things go back onto the stove, back into the icebox. And from the icebox, they go back into the cans. From the cans, they go back to the store. From the stores, they go back to the wholesalers. And from the wholesalers, they go back to the factories, where they've been put together. And from the factories, they go on trucks and ships, and finally get back to being pineapples in Hawaii. I learned to play war games. But the world game, the real game, is doing more with less. All of human history demonstrates a process 
of accelerating ephemeralization. The history of shipbuilding, sea ships, airships, spaceships, is a record of ever doing more and more with less and less. It's a design science revolution we're living in. Science now founds, finds that there is enough for all, but only if the sovereign fences are completely removed. The basic you or me, not enough for both, ergo somebody must die principles of class warfaring are extinct. But I never attack undesirable socioeconomic phenomena. I cultivate the necessary tools, making their use so easy, efficient, and pleasant that the undesirable ways will simply be abandoned. I never try to tell anybody else what to do. When the world believed that there was not enough to go around, selfishness made sense. But now we know that there is enough to go around. Selfishness has no integrity whatsoever. There are logical things that can be done. And it's what you just do, like the crew of a ship when the ship's in danger. Spaceship Earth is in danger. The things to do or the things that you see need to be done, that nobody else seems to see need to be done. This will bring out the real you that sometimes gets buried in a character that has acquired a superficial array of behaviors induced or imposed by others. People say that I I'm an optimist, and I say I'm a very hard realist. I know we have the option to make it, and that's very different from being an optimist. I know we have the capability to destroy ourselves, but I think we are going to make it. We have a choice. Don't let up, or we won't make it. Keep at your integrity more than ever before in all your life. And we will make it. So thank you, darling people. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to go on my sailing boat on Little Harbor and admire my dog.